Rabbi Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show. Com, the Chris Voss Show. Com. Here are the blog posts I want to share with you. We're reviewing two great phones here today. We're going to be reviewing the T-Mobile HTC One S and the HTC through Virgin Mobile uh, HTC One V, and I should say the HTC One S. So you'll get to see these boot up here, and uh, of course you can find the T-Mobile phone at t-mobile.com. That's t dash mobile.com and the uh, other phone uh, for Virgin Mobile you can find at virginmobileusa.com that's virginmobileusa.com so we're comparing two very similar phones from the HTC One line HTC One S HTC One V so this should be a very interesting thing we're gonna pit the two against each other there are some differences between the two and we'll find out what they are now as you can see here they're both running HTC Sense we'll break down some of their numbers and everything else here in, in a second so you'll be able to see them. They both have the ring launch to pull them out of uh, to pull them out of standby mode. Let's talk about the HTC One S. The HTC One S here on the left has got 130.9 by 65 by 7.8 millimeter dimensions. It's got a weight of 119.5 gig or grams. It's got a 4.3 Super inch, uh, I'm sorry, inch super AMOLED capacitive screen, 540 by 960. A Android 4.0 uh, ice cream sandwich is what normally comes on it. We've upgraded it since. One gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, a dual core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, and uh, an 8 megapixel rear camera, 1.3 megapixel front camera. And of course, with HTC, they own Beats Audio, so it comes with Beats Audio on it, much as does the HTC One V comes with Beats Audio also. Uh, its dimensions are a little bit smaller. It's uh, 120 by 59.7 by 9.2 millimeters. Its weight is 115 grams. It has a 3.7 inch TFT capacitive display, 480 by 800. It's got HTC Sense UI on it. It comes with each uh, Android Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich, one gigahertz single core Qualcomm processor, a 512 megabyte RAM, four gigabytes built in storage. It is upgradable with an MSD uh, memory slot up to 32 gigabytes of memory that you can have in it. 5 megapixel rear camera and it does not have a front facing camera so that is one significant difference between the two phones. Uh, both phones are great phones in my experience and use of them. Uh, there's also some difference here with the T-Mobile phone. You're buying a two year contract when you usually pick up one of these phones unless you pay outright for them. With the uh, Virgin Mobile you can go month to month. You prepay the phones and you're not locked into a contract but you do pay a full price for the phones usually when you buy them. Uh, both phones have been great phones for me to test and play with and you can see some of our other videos on the Chris Foss show that we may have uh, taken and played with and seen how all the, they compare between all sorts of other phones. Let's go into settings and I'm going to show you what we're working with here when it comes to the OS system. So you can see here they both have a left to right flip switch when it comes to looking at their apps. And we're going to page down here to the about section and we're going to see here that the software information that we're running on. Now you can see here we've upgraded both phones to Android 4.03. Um, hopefully they'll both go eventually up to 4.04. They both have HTC Sense version 4.0 on them, which is really nice that they both do. It definitely makes them very compatible um, and able to compare very well, as you can see here. Um, of course, you can see that it's a much smaller screen down here where you've got much more room to deal with. It's also much wider when you see it on the T-Mobile One S. With the One S, you're looking at a back button, a home button, and a recent apps button that you can take and click on. Across the top, you're looking at a speaker for your uh, calls, and you're looking at a uh, front-facing camera. With the HTC One V, you know, you've got a speaker area in the top. You also have the same buttons, the back button, the home button, and the recent apps button. Okay, so getting more into this, uh, what we also have is you've got the uh, pretty much the left and right uh, non, you would probably call this a finite swipe with the uh, screens uh, 
where they do not go all the way around and you have to go from one end to the other. They all have the customization of widgets and everything else you'd normally expect from HTC and the Android software. Pull down menus for the notifications you can see are extremely similar, if not exactly. Uh, we just don't have any notifications that are over here on this side. T-Mobile's got a feature that shows your minutes and different things that you take and use. So uh, very very similar in the software that we're taking and using. Pretty much it's going to come down to a hardware comparison that we're going to do. Let's go ahead and do that now. Alright, so here we can see the bottoms of both phones. We have microphone holes at both ends of them. And of course there's a curve up thing that is at the end of the HTC One V that kind of points it up to be a difference. You can see it's a, they're about the same size when it comes to thickness. Here you can see the tops of both devices. We have a power button, a little hole to pull the top up to put the SIM card in. We have another microphone area and also a near phone plug. Same thing with the uh, HTC One V. We have a power button. We have a uh, earphone button to go in and I'm not sure if we have a microphone area on this. Nope, we do not. So uh, no microphone at the top and all that good stuff. Down the right hand side of both devices we have a rocker switch right here for up and down volume. Same thing with the HTC uh, One V. Okay, so down the left hand side we both have charger plugs to be able to charge and sync the devices on the left hand side. You can see the little bit of lip that comes up on the One V. Now on both uh, uh, devices I really like them. They feel well in the hand. They're very solidly uh, built. They have a metal, I think this has a, it feels like it has a metal finish to it. Um, but uh, it definitely feels very strong and powerful in the hand. Uh, with the HTC, you've got your camera up top, and it's nicely recessed below a thing that protects the camera. You've also got your flash there. Now, the top part does pop off, and just for the sole purpose of installing your SIM card, that's really the only thing it does. You can see here on the bottom that it has the Beats Audio, of course, with both phones have. I actually like the Beats Audio Enhancement Sound for the devices. You can turn them on or off if you want. You can see the speaker there at the bottom for listening to music, playing videos, all that good stuff. Here you can see the HTC has got the camera eye in the back and it's got a uh, flash, much smaller camera aperture if you will. You can see the logo here. And then on the bottom you can see Beats Audio and it has a small speaker that's there. The bottom does pop off because the memory, of course, remember, is upgradable. You can slide your micro SD card in there and pop it together, and away you go. So, very cool for both phones. Okay, so let's get into some speed tests with the phones. You can see here, these are the speed tests we run. Now, the other difference with these phones is the HTC only runs, the, the HTC One V only runs on 3G network, so it does not get a 4G connection. So its speeds are much less in comparison. So that's one difference in element that you have to give up with the HTC One V. Here are the scores you can see on how they scored using the AN22 Benchmark 2.9.2. The great thing about these benchmark apps is they're all free. You can follow along at home with your own phone and see how your per phone performs with uh, the phones that are here and decide which one's best for you. You can see that the score overall was 7,041 against 3060 for the HTC One V. It's got a less processor in it uh, by half a thing of processor. In it. It's not a quad core processor like the One S is, so obviously it's going to outperform, but you can see the numbers here and get a good idea. I got to tell you, the HTC One V does do very well for the size and speed of phone that it is. In fact, it rocks pretty good for a nice little Android phone. Okay, so now here we can see really difference in the CPU. This is uh, using Billion Counter app. Uh, the One uh, S did it in 19.75 seconds. The uh, One V did it in 55.9 nine seconds. Okay, so here we can see with the uh, uh, benchmarking that we're using here, the uh, HTC One scored a 4046 against the uh, V scored 1889 on the Quadrant Standard benchmarking test. You can see here uh, came a little bit higher, of course, well quite a bit higher I should say on the One uh, S as compared to the V, so that gives us a breakdown there. So here we're using the Passmark performance test, and you can see here we scored a total system of 2,087 with the One 
S and with the V we scored 984. You see the breakdown of some of these scores and how they come out between the two CPU tests, disk tests, memory tests, 2D graphic card tests you can see here, and also your 3D graphics tests. Okay, here you can see our Geekbench 2 scores. The uh, overall score for the 1S was 1559, 491 for the S. You can see how these scores broke down between integers, floating points, memory, streams, all that good stuff. The key is, of course, there's a faster gigahertz processor in this one. And uh, all that good stuff. You can see some of the integer performance that's here. Some of the floating performance here. I should probably make that so it's a little easier to pause, stop, see, and compare. Most of these numbers are aren't going to matter too much. Really, you're looking at the total scores that are the big things that are really going to make the difference here in the uh, processors and how they work and measuring the performance therein. So you can see those there. So, you know, obviously, it's a much faster, uh, much faster smartphone. Okay, so here we can see the satellites that each one of them is picking up and how accurate they can be down to the wire. Both are coming in within about 10, 13 feet. You can see here there's some variance. The uh, 1S is picking up more satellites. It's got 18 of you and use 13. Uh, on the uh, 1V, you're looking at 11 and 10. And it's a fairly close gamble as to, as to how, many, uh, as how close is getting in accuracy when it comes to your GPS and knowing exactly where you are. Okay, so now here we can see a test of the uh, the uh, benchmarking the native and, J and Java threads. You can see here that the uh, native threads performed at 56, 5365 and 214 in Java. In native for the uh, V, it did it in 1010 and 45 for the Java. Okay, so you can see here using the GL benchmark 2.1.5 Egypt, uh, the 1S achieved a 64. 6,451 frames at 57 frames per second on the screen. Uh, on the 1V, uh, it did 34, 30 frames at 30 frames per second on the screen. Okay, so here we can see the KFS benchmark test. The uh, bamboo test was performing with 17 frames per second. Well, on the 1S59 frames per second, you can see some of the comparisons here. Obviously, the frame uh, per second speed rate of the 1S is much better than the 1V. Now let's take a look at the camera on both these devices and you can see how that operates. Cameras, of course, to me are some of the most important aspects of a smartphone. Um, you can see here that uh, they're very, very similar. You've got controls up here for uh, turning on and off your flash uh, light and bulb. Uh, you've got the settings menu here. You can of course do the number of things you can always do through Androids. Uh, you can of course do lots of different controls, image resolution, video quality, etc, etc. Um, where you can adjust it up and down, view durations, image adjustments uh, that you can take and make basically just like you would with an expensive camera. You can make definite adjustments to it. Um, uh, you can of course change your ISO, white balance settings. One thing that is nice with the HTC phone is it has a feature where you can shoot up to 20 frames uh, in like an action shot and then you decide which ones you want to take and keep and it will delete the rest of them. It also has continuous shooting which is really really fast and so that works out really well. Let's go into camera options. You can see here you've got a few different things you can do with face detection, auto smile, capture, widescreen resolution, etc. etc. Video options, you've got different things like stabilization, record with audio, uh, camera interface, of course, the grid, all that sort of good stuff, auto upload, etc., etc. Down here you have uh, the ability to change different scenes, if you will, for camera scenes, HDR, portrait, landscape. These can help adjust some of the auto settings for light and different other issues you may have in shooting environments. Uh, with the this opaque circle up here, this gives you the ability to create different effects, and the effects become um, the effects become apparent in the uh, lens that you can take and see, and you can choose several different uh, ones that they have available here for you, which is pretty cool. Um, and of course, you can choose what you want to take and do. You can see here we have a zoom bar, so we can zoom in and out.
and then we also have a shutter button and a uh, button for movie using the uh, video camera. The uh, portfolio or area that will keep track of your photos you can find in, of course there in your bottom right hand side. Now uh, the colors come out really good on the HTC's but one thing is interesting about the HTC One line is they've jacked up the yellow, blues, and greens, and they've basically done it to make the photos pop a little bit more. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. You can adjust it down in the settings if you want, but we have noticed that the colors come out with a lot more yellow, and if you're in a yellow environment, you tend to notice it a whole lot more. This is an example of a shot we did. It takes great photos with the S <clears throat> and both with the X. I, mean, I think they're probably the same camera when it comes down to it in their build. Um, but you can see here, this uh, the floor of my uh, kitchen is much darker than this. Uh, and you can see here the contribution of the yellows and also the greens. Um, it works very well. The, the colors in video and in photos look really good. Comes out really nice. There's sometimes when I'm using other smartphone cameras where I have to actually kind of enhance the, um, the lighting and post-production. So this gives you kind of that feel and balance to it. You can also see here how it performs in a video setting with taking video. And uh, you can also see here there's a little bit more yellow than what you would see uh, on the photo that's coming through on the video. So very interesting that one. Of course, there's different ways of adjusting this and all that good stuff. So it's not a killer in any way, shape, or form. It's a great camera that's in the S and the X. Um, let's go into a low light video situation. This is, of course, using the uh, camcorder light if you will, on the back of the thing. Uh, we got great colors, uh, very good details in low light situation. This was a dark area, it was completely black, and the phone lights it up very well and shows it off very well. Uh, flash wise, in a flash environment, this is a low level environment where this was all dark. You can see here the flash is very well lit up the environment. We've got the colors still pop. We've got very accurate shooting and detail. So, uh, very great camera on the HTC One S. Now let's take a look at the camera capabilities and aspects of it. Of course, here you're running on HTC Sense 4.0. Uh, you've got several different elements where you have the ability to control your flash up here. You've got the ability to control settings and of course your different menus here you can see where you can control self timers, image resolution, you can control video quality you can control. Let's go back to that. Uh, video quality you can control how big of a screen you want to take and shoot with. Uh, review duration, uh, image adjustments, ISOs, etc. etc. Um, white balance, storage, you can adjust where you want to have the photo stored, of course, if you want to store them to the micro SD card. You do have the continuous shooting element of this, and this is really cool with the HTC product. You can limit it to 20 frames, you can do an auto review where you do a bunch of continuous shooting, and you can choose which ones you want to keep. Really like that feature with the HTC product. Um, you can record with audio, you can do different video options here, you can see, um, let's get that drop down actually. Uh, looks like record with audio is the is the only one camera interface uh, you can see we can do a grid you can set auto upload and reset to default so we also have several different features here where you can do slow motion video auto HDR panorama por portrait group portrait landscape whiteboard close-up low light basically different ways that you can really customize your pictures and the quality to deal with whatever it is you're trying to get your photos done right. Now of course you do have a zoom in and out button so you have that feature available to you. Up here we have um, some lenses that you can take and see where you can page through different lenses to take and get different aspects of video recording or photos where you can uh, take and kind of Instagram them up if you will. Now you also have here a button for your shutter for the photos. You also have a button for recording um, your video camera. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that we got in the test that we did. We found the camera's pretty good. Uh, it's a 5 megapixel camera, so you're dealing with that aspect of it. Let's take a look at some pictures here first. We'll scroll over. Now, we found that the pictures that are taken with the HTC are taken with pretty good portrayal of what we uh, 
what we what what the, what the environment looked like that we took and shot. So the pictures come out very well, very detailed. It's an impressive camera for a five megapixel camera. I've seen meg five megapixel cameras that have been. Uh, and really not as good. So the HTC product does come out well with the camera. It shoots well, um, and we liked what we saw. Here's a low light situation where we're using flash. Uh, you can see it's very detailed. Uh, in comparing some of the other phones to this that are comparable in its uh, in its in, in its uh, build, uh, we found that the HTC this one uh, took in pretty much outperformed it. It gave us great clarity in picture with flash and you could uh, easily see the images and the colors came out really well. Um, in video we have noticed with the HTC product that they've done something to crank up the yellows, blues, and greens. Now it works out really good because if you're shooting something and you want to get it brighter than it would normally come out and of course lighting is the key to great videos um, being able to have it with a little bit of yellow adjustment to make the colors pop a little bit more in your yellows and greens, and greens is great. But what we found is the video is not accurate to the colors that we have. The color, the floor is much darker. You can see here the greens coming out much more. Um, is that uh, that big of a deal? Not really. You can change some of those settings and, and taper them back inside of the settings menu, of course. But we just want to give you some feedback on how it records. Um, here is a low light uh, video recording that we took and did. A um, little weak on the flash and the, the ability to really light up what we're trying to video or video uh, something really close up. It doesn't do too bad, um, but uh, we've seen other phones that are comparable in series and size. You can see the comparison videos as to what we've done there. Overall, both phones are really awesome. You can pick up the uh, HTC One S at t-mobile.com. That's t-mobile.com, and you can also pick up the HTC One V at uh, virginmobileusa.com. That's virginmobileusa.com. I think they both rock. I love the thinness of the build. They feel good in the hand. It's nice to have a nice small phone that doesn't have the gargantuan screens that you see on stuff now and they have much less droppability because they fit more uh, ergonomically into your hands. Both great phones, both great companies. Be sure to check both of them out. Tell them Chris Voss sent you. Chris Voss tested, Chris Voss approved. Uh, be sure to check both out and the other video uh, videos we're doing on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the Chris Voss show comparisons that we're doing currently. Thanks for coming by.